question now. Now, therefore, a equal to some constant k into m into a. Because if we withdraw the proportional sign, then a constant of proportionality must be taken. Here k is a constant of proportionality. Okay. K is the constant of proportionality. Proportionality. Constant of proportionality. Now, we make the value of K as 1 by taking suitable units of the force. Now, we choose the unit force unit unit force that is f equal to 1 that is f equal to 1 in this equation unit force is that amount of force amount of force that amount of force which that amount of force which which while acting on unit mass that is m equal to 1 Unit force is that amount of force which when acting on unit mass, that is mass m equal to 1, produces in it, produces in it and unit and acceleration and acceleration of unity or unit of unit T, that is k equal to 1. Now we put the value, these values in the above equation. This is the equation. We put these values in the equation, above equation. What we, we get? We get that, that is, that is, f equal to 1 when m equal to 1 and a equal to 1. That is, f will be 1 unit while mass equal to 1 and acceleration is also equal to 1. Therefore, from the above equation, from the above equation, from the above equation, we get we get by putting f equal to 1, m equal to 1, and a equal to 1. That is 1 equal to k into 1 into 1. That means k equal to 1. Right? f equal to 1, k equal to k, m equal to 1, and a equal to 1. Therefore, k equal to 1. That is, we have. Therefore, we have f equal to k becomes 1. k becomes 1. Hence, f equal to, what will be the value of f? f equal to m into a. f equal to m into a. Therefore, f equal to m into a. This is the very important equation. Force equal to mass into acceleration, march into acceleration. Remember this question. Remember this equation. Force equal to mass into acceleration. F equal to m into m. F equal to m into m. 
very important relation for solving various problems related with force, mass and acceleration. If any two of them is known, we get the unknown value. Now, what is the unlaw motion, you know the law motion? To every action there is an equal or opposite reaction. What do we mean by this? And this action reaction always acts in two different bodies. This action reaction are nothing but two forces having same magnitude but opposite direction. Let us consider a okay. plane. This is a plane. An object of white W is kept on it. Right? It is a plane. plane. This is a block. Now, if white W acts vertical downwards, is it at the quantity? Yes, we may write arrow sign. Narrow sign. And the plane also exerted an equal amount of force. We write it as another uh, symbol. A N in opposite direction. Hence, if this force is action, that is W B action, force exerted by the this is the force exerted by the block on the plane. Plane surface on the plane. This is the force, force exerted by the plane on the block, by the plane on the block. According to Newton's third law motion, here W equal to minus N or N equal to minus W. According to Newton's third law motion, this law that is action, if we take an action, then it will be the reaction. This action, then it will be the reaction. Right? According to according to Newton's third law motion. These two forces are equal and opposite. These two forces are equal and opposite. That is, N equal to minus W or W equal to minus N. Right? This may be written in this way. Now, we know some or one each examples of the inertia of rest. Inertia of rest. Let us consider a bus or vehicle at rest and it starts to move and it speeds up suddenly. Then that is the rate of speed increased, it increased suddenly. Then the passengers in it, standing or sitting, you get it, just tends to fall or lean backwards. This is due to the inertia of rest because when the bus is stopped, there is not at rest, not moving. All the system is at rest and hence inertia of rest also in the case of the passengers. Now, when the bus starts and suddenly speeds up, then since the downwards, that is legs, 
cast on the plane of the vehicle or bus. Yeah. If the bus shares its velocity immediately within the lower portion of the body, but the upper portion being previously at rest, it tends to remain in its, in its state of rest. And hence, it they, they tends to fall backward, they lean backwards. Right? This is due to the inertia of rest. Again, inertia of motion. Similarly, if a moving vehicle, there is bus or any other vehicle, moving vehicle, stops suddenly or returns suddenly, then due to inertia of motion, the passengers in its standing or standing or move sitting and unmindfully, obviously in both the cases, then due to inertia of motion, they moves forwards. That means moves to fall back, to fall forwards or leans forwards. Because in this case, the lower portion of the passengers sitting or standing on it is are in motion with the bus. But when the bus suddenly stops or returns, the lower portion barely touched with the bus. Uh, that is, the stopness of the bus, the resting of the bus, shares quickly in the lower portion of the passengers. But the upper portions not immediately shares the rest due to being in, it is not touched with the bus directly. Hence the passengers leads or leads to fall in forward direction. Okay? This is the inertia of motion. Example of the inertia of motion. Now, what uh, is the third law motion? What is the third law motion? Third law motion is the wave reaction. There is an equal opposite reaction. Right? It can be proved by number of experiments. One experiment is that if a hoop spring, if a spring balance, this is a spring balance, this is a spring balance. With a hook. And in this case, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Calibration are already given. Now, in another spring balance, we attach to it. Here also numbering one, two, three, four, five, etc. are calibrated. So if by our hands, by our hands, then it is we pull, we pull it. Yeah, obviously, we pull it. Pull it by your hand. Then, ultimately, you see that in all the all the situations, both springs are showing same region. That is either in the point three. This is also in point three, right? That is. If one is action, another is reaction, and action reaction acts on two different bodies, right? 
it is equivalent of a g equivalent of a g. similarly if we don't hold another side one side it is rigidly support it is rigidly support with a fixed rigid support the fixed rigid support and in the another two hooks are two spring balance are connected together as earlier if we pull it by our hand then so in both the springs are showing same pattern this is the axial reaction equivalent of the jigs direction now we have the definition we have the force units units of force units of force we write the units of force in only we write here absolute unit of force in si system the absolute unit of force the absolute unit of force in si system absolute unit of force in si system is newton it is written as a and absolute unit of force is in system dai and in si in fp system pound dai remember now newton we define newton newton one newton one newton is defined to be a force which which by acting on a body of One kilogram mass produces in it produces in it an acceleration of an acceleration of one meter per second square. Right? One newton is defined to be a force which, when acting on a body of Mass one kilogram, right? It may be written mass, mass at first, and then one kilogram. Mass one kilogram of mass one kilogram produces in kilogram. This is kilogram, right? It, it may be written in your language. Kilogram produces in it an acceleration of one meter per second square. That is one newton, one newton, or one in. One n equal to mass into acceleration. If you go to mass into acceleration, you know it. Are you? Then if you go to m into m, that is one kilogram into one meter per second square. Right? Time is the CGS absolute unit of force, and another this uh, force, the law of this force, this force, this unit of force, that the absolute unit of any force. But see in any system, CGS, FP, so in case all are not dependent upon the axial centric gravity that is upon the place, right? But another unit of force is also known to us, which is called the gravitational unit of force, which is gram force or gram wave in CGS system, right? Pound force or pound weight in FP system and kilogram force or kilogram weight in MK or SI system. In the case of MK system, the gravitational unit of force one kilogram weight that is the weight of one kilogram object, one kilogram mass object, one kilogram object. That is the force by which Earth attracts towards its center, gravitational force of this unit of one kilogram. This is the gravitational unit of force in SI system. Now, we 
know something about uh, law of conservation of momentum, linear momentum. Law of conservation of linear momentum or simply linear momentum, simply momentum, linear momentum. If a system of particles or bodies, if a system of particles, if a system of particles acted upon, acted upon, by there, that is two or more particles. System of particles means two or more particles present in the in the case in the system. By their mutual mutual interactions. Interaction. Mutual interaction. That is action and reaction. If a system of particles acted upon by their mutual interaction, but no external force, no external force will act on them, then the total linear momentum, that is the total momentum, that is A. The total linear momentum, we write it linear. Linear momentum in any particular direction, linear momentum in any particular direction particular means given. Given direction direction it remains constant remains same if a system of particles acted upon only acted upon only by their mutual interactions that is action and reaction but no external force will act on them then the total linear momentum in any particular direction or given direction remains constant remains constant remains constant that is same that is same what will it mean that is the linear momentum before interaction is equal to the linear momentum after interaction. Okay? That is obviously providing no external force will act on them. This is very important. No external force will act on them. That is linear momentum of the system the system of particles system of particles particles before interaction before we write it as as before collision linear momentum of the system of particles before collision equal to linear momentum of them after collision 
Mari daftar introduction. Di dalam moment kamu ke sistem apa dia? Before kalau sistem itu di dalam moment kamu, dia maafkan kalau dia provide no external force will act on the body. And if this linear moment kamu ke sistem is in a particular direction, right? It must be. Let us consider that. The system of particles, that is particle system, contain only two particles. Particle one having mass m one, particle two having mass m one and m two. This is and if they move in the same direction. This is m one having initial velocity one, and this is m two having initial velocity two. This is before collision. Before collision, they move in the same direction with velocity v1 with velocity f2. Now, during their impact, during their impact, that is m1 m2, they apply force, and after the impact, they separate each other. We are approaching each other. That is u1, obviously greater than u2. Now, its velocity becomes v1, and it becomes v2. This is u1, this is v2. Right? That is, we take two particles of mass m1 and m2, having initial velocities v1 and u2 respectively. Then, u1 greater than u2, hence after some time, they collide to each other. And after collision, they separated out with velocities v1 and v2 of mass m1 and m2 respectively. And here, here obviously, they separated to each other v1 less than v2. This is before collision. Here, f1 means magnitude as same, but direction of the Before collision. This is during collision, and this is after collision. Here, all the collisions are elastic. There is no energy lost. Now, before collision and after collision. Before collision, the total linear momentum. What will be the total linear momentum? It will be m1 u1. Plus m2 u2 be the total linear momentum, and after collision, the total linear momentum becomes m1 v1 plus m2 v2. We can prove it that m1 v1 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 in a very simple way, right? This is the conservation of linear momentum. We prove it in the next class, right? And some problems and questions are also discussed in that class. Okay, thank, thank you.